Hey there, welcome back to the Steel City Sports YouTube channel. Coming to you directly from Pittsburgh, PA. Today we're going to be talking about the power rankings from Week 10. A lot of really interesting games this week. A lot of upsets happened this week, so I can't wait to get into the list here. Uh, make sure you leave a comment down below and feel free to subscribe. In at the number 10 spot is a familiar face from last week, the New York Giants. They were exactly in this spot last week. And the reason why I didn't bump them up at all is because they beat the Houston Texans, probably the worst team in the NFL. So I don't give the Giants too much credit. They handled their business. They beat the Texans. They continue to show that they are a very well-coached team. They run the offense extremely efficiently. And Saquon Barkley continues to build on his extremely impressive year, posting over 150 rushing yards in this game. And I still think he is in that conversation for Offensive Player of the Year. Still think Dable is kind of running away with Coach of the Year this year. So they stay in at the 10 spot. All right, so in at that 9 spot, we do have the Baltimore Ravens. They are down one spot from last week, but it's not really to any fault of their own. They were on a bye this past week, so... They kind of just slid because some other teams around the league improved in my eyes. But they still, in my opinion, are the favorite to win the AFC North. I know the Bengals are right there. But the Bengals are just too inconsistent for me this year. They've looked, uh, you know, one week they look great. Another week they just look bad. It really comes down to their offense being too inconsistent. That's why I think Baltimore is still the favorite to win the AFC North. And especially after trading for a superstar like Roquan, I think he's exactly what the Ravens were missing. If they were just able to get uh, a really good receiver, like if they signed like an Odell, they would be a lot higher for me. But right now, nine seems like a good spot for Baltimore. And at that eighth spot, we have a similar team like the Ravens. This team was on a bye this week, and I did unfortunately have to bump them down a couple of spots. You know, when you're on a bye, you kind of do slide down a little just because, you know, you're out of the public eye. But the Jets, everything I said about them last week really still does hold, you know, true. Their defense is extremely impressive, and Robert Sala has 100% won me over. You know, before the year started, I was kind of questioning him, but he has 100% won me over. That defense looks legit. Sauce Gardner looks like he already has an argument to be the best cornerback in football. I think he's clearly run away with the defensive rookie of the year. And that run game is very, very strong. Even with their star, Brees Hall, getting hurt, they were still able to fill it in with Michael Carter and trading for James Robinson. So the Jets, they're really interesting. And, you know, they, they continue to make the AFC one of the top divisions now because you have three to four legitimate teams in that division. The Jets, they're, they're in the fight now. They're in the fight for that division. So they're at eight. At number seven, we have the Dallas Cowboys, who lost this past week to the Green Bay Packers. 31 to 28 and I think that this game really showed the fatal flaw with the Dallas Cowboys uh, really with Dak the problem is with Dak is whenever the big moments come the big games come Dak shrinks that's always been what he you know that's been the makeup of his career thus far so I think I did have them a little over inflated earlier in the year just because of how good their defense is. But this is what Dallas is. They're going to win a lot of games in the regular season, but whenever the big games come around, they're going to lose, and that's why I don't really look at them as a real Super Bowl contender right now. So they stay at 7. And at number 6, we have the 49ers. The 49ers have always been a team throughout this year that I thought was better than their record said. And if you remember back earlier in the year, they were up in my top five for a while. They kind of had a, an ugly run there and dipped down, but they're back up here at the sixth spot. And the thing about the Niners is whenever the big games are on the line, they, they pull out. It seems like they play better in the, the uh, primetime games. You know, in the night game on Sunday against the Chargers, they pulled that one out. And just look back to the playoffs last year. They were the sixth seed in the NFC, and they made it all the way to the conference final and they almost beat the Rams in that game so they're a team they're definitely better on paper than what their record says especially after acquiring Christian McCaffrey so they're always going to be a threat and I have them at six this week and at the number five spot we have the Buffalo Bills 
This is the second consecutive week that I've had to drop the Bills down. They are on a two-game losing streak to the Jets and then to the Vikings. A crazy game, which you know, I could probably make a, a separate video just about how good that, that game really was, particularly at the end. But my concerns with Buffalo, like I said last week, the run game isn't consistent enough, so you have to have Josh Allen kind of play hero ball. That came back to bite the Bills. Uh, they were driving down the field. They looked really good. They looked like they were going to win in overtime. Then Allen throws the pick to Patrick Peterson. That's game because you rely on him too much. The offensive um, play calling just, you know, he shouldn't be throwing the ball as much as he is. He had to really run around and make all the plays on his own, really, at, at the, you know, in the overtime drive there. And I brought this up last week as well with the head coach, Sean McDermott. It's not that I think he's a bad head coach, but now that Brian Dable is gone, you're starting to see Allen be a little more reckless with the ball, and I just don't know if McDermott's the best fit there. Uh, and another thing about the Bills, they're now currently in third place in their division. If you would have told us back at the beginning of the year that in Week 10 the Bills will be third place in the AFC East, no one would have believed that because you know they've been the overwhelming favorite throughout the year. But we're starting to see cracks in this foundation now. I still think they're going to be fine come playoff time, but they're not looking as invincible as they once did. Speaking of the AFC East at four, we have the current division leader, the Miami Dolphins. They have looked incredible when Tua plays. They're 7-0 and when he does play. They just routed the Cleveland Browns. I think Tua has pretty much silenced all the doubters. And I'm going to keep bringing this up because it was a pretty big storyline last season. Uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, Tua could be done. Like, a lot of major publications were saying Tua isn't going to make it. And just give the guy weapons and look at what he's doing with Tyreek and Waddle. They're on pace to be one of the best offenses ever. Tyreek Hill is on pace to break the record for, you know, yards in a single season. So they're just an incredible team. Uh, the hire of Mike McDaniel is a home run hit right now. And yeah, the Dolphins, they're rolling. They're at four. And at three, we have a team that has consistently been able to rise through the ranks throughout this year. That's the Minnesota Vikings. They won the game of the year. As far as I'm concerned, that was the best game I've seen this year. The Bills and the Vikings. Justin Jefferson had Probably the catch of the year. You know, I honestly thought that that was an intercepted pass, but Jefferson came down with it by far and away a stud. You know, I think you can make a case Jefferson is the best receiver in football. Kirk Cousins is having the best season of his career. The Vikings are absolutely rolling. They're a powerhouse right now, and they've run away with the NFC North. It's not even close now with the Packers. So they get all the way up here at three, by far the highest the Vikings have ever been on this on this uh, list. And at two, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. It finally happened. You know, I said last week, uh, I was excited to see how long this streak lasted. Well, I only had to wait one more week because the streak is over. The Eagles are now eight and one. Uh, does it matter? Not really, because the Eagles are still one of the best teams in the NFL. And no realistic person had the Eagles going undefeated. Um, it is. It does suck because, you know, it's always fun to see how far undefeated teams can last. But I'm still very high on the Eagles. Um, it, their, a loss was bound to come. And the Commanders, I think, are a lot better than what people give them credit for. I think they have uh, a lot of good personnel on both sides of the ball. And they improved to 500. But for the Eagles, like I said, that's not really – I'm not too worried with the fact that they got a loss here. Jalen Hurts didn't play particularly great, but – uh, the, the final score will tell you kind of is misleading because the uh, commanders got a touchdown at the very end of the game whenever the Eagles were trying to do like a, you know, like a, a lateral kind of thing to, you know, get a, a chance at getting a touchdown at the end. So it was a very close game. The Eagles, they just didn't win it. It's okay. It happens. They'll move on. They'll still be good. They're still one of the best teams in the league. And at one, we have the Chiefs with the Bills kind of crumbling right now. The Chiefs look like the safe pick to get out of the AFC. And they just always find a way to win games. Mahomes has been sensational. And I always bring this up whenever we talk about the Chiefs is their defense has been one of the most surprising stories this year because earlier in the year, I picked the Chargers to win this division because I said 
the Chiefs' defense would be too bad this year, but they've really reinvented that defense. It looks really good right now. And like I said, Mahomes just will always find a way to win games, and the offense is humming right now. They look like the best team in the NFL with Buffalo crumbling and with the Eagles getting their first loss. I think it's kind of easy to put them at one. So that's going to do it for Week 10 Power Rankings. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.